DC's got a new slate of movies, TVs, and video games. Let's go hard at it. Let's check it out. That's right, friends. I am the man you may know as Z, and we're here to check out uh, the big giant announcement that they've been teasing for quite a while here about the DCU and then DC Elseworld. Elseworlds? Elseworlds. That's right. So there's going to be parts that connect and parts that don't connect. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Hollywood Reporter article that breaks everything down. And uh, we're going to hear from the man himself, the man, the myth, James Gunn. Do you trust him? Hard to say. What are we going to look at here? Uh, DC finally unveils their new slate with Batman, Green Lantern, Supergirl movie, all sorts of crazy news here, but we're going to hear the. I'm going to break it down as we go on. Apparently, they shared about 10 projects. I'll give you my opinion as we go through hearing what James Gunn had to say himself. If you check out this article, you'll see all of a little bit more detail, especially about things that I didn't know about. And it uh, sounds like James Gunn's really digging through the crates there to get some older stuff for some, some things that we've never heard of before. But all that being said, uh, let's take a listen. Hear what he has to say for himself, right? And some of these were projects we'd heard of, some of them we haven't heard of. But um, you know, it's it's definitely interesting. Uh, you know, before we get started, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We really do appreciate it here. And uh, be sure to catch out. We do have a full length audio podcast as well. But let's hear what James Gunn has to say. Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has So for those of you who don't know, he is the he's the create he's I would say he's probably the creative part of the CEO. Um part of this and the other guy is the money man, uh, Peter Safran. Uh he's a well like known producer who's been doing things for a long time and and studio head, so or studio executive, I should say. Been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And what The only thing I'll say about that is, this sounds really, really try hard. Like, uh, I, I don't know where they're thinking... Like, I don't necessarily care that the video games are connected or even that the animation. I like the concept that the animation can explore things that we haven't seen. So, you know, I, you know, it's not, it's just not a priority. I don't know why they're and making if it. If something one. is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very... And was he really in his own part of the DCU? He did have uh, Superman make a cameo in his thing, and they had many... If I just recently watched Shazam, because I will watch the Fury of the Gods... And there's an awful lot of Easter eggs and tie-ins to the original DCEU, and it seemed like it was going that direction. Uh, he's going to tell us that, you know, he could fit in anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Okay, we understand, James Gunn. This, this was given to you. You had no choice. You're going to take it. Very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. Then what I don't understand was they didn't use The Flash to reset the entire DC universe with Henry Cavill and Wonder Woman and all that. They could have done it. I don't see why they didn't. And uh, everybody keeps saying that this new Flash movie is fantastic. But I'm gonna... I will I will wait for judgment. I still don't understand why Ezra Miller has been fired. And to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film. A That's two fantastic films. Three fantastic films, by the way, right there. Three fantastic films that we haven't seen. Blue Beetle's not even done. About a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm going to tell you about now. 
So Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, very started talented. to map out an eight to 10 year plan. The editing on this is a little jarring. I don't know why he couldn't just read a script and why somebody else had to edit this and kind of chop up what he was saying because it almost seems like things would be taken out of context. Of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation. See, to me, this sounds like a vanity project that he already had set up uh, by Peacemaker, off based off the success of Peacemaker. Usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller. This was a carryover. Uh, obviously, he liked, um, he did Suicide Squad, and I think he, that idea that Waller would get her own show was already kicking around. I mean, I like Viola Davis. She does a great job. But, you know, if it's more Let's Kill People Played like by Suicide Viola Squad, Davis. I'll, I'll watch Viola it. Viola Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker, and this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created that's the Doom warning. Patrol. That's a warning. Watchmen, not It good. is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU this is called Superman. This is the one we've heard a lot about, the Superman legacy, where they're rebooting all of Superman, and this is his new jump-off point, which I guess starts at 2025. Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it, and Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called lanterns this is a story of a couple this is a strange one because this lanterns one about the two green lanterns has been kicking around in production hell for a long time now i think at one point greg berlanti was attached to it uh of the arrowverse so now it's going forward and they've re they changed all of the casting they haven't cast anybody but they changed the direction of the story where it's gonna be hal jordan green lanterns john stewart and, john stewart. and hal jordan and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there but this is really a terrestrial based tv show which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops sure. watching over space cops, Earth. but In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority this is I know a passion project about. of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters we are now bringing into the DCU. See, I've always been more of a of a Marvel guy, so like my comic book collection is all Marvel with very scattered bits and pieces of DC, so I know nothing about this project. And we'll interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't need to see that at all. No, thank you. Check, please. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DC. <sighs> I guess. Next up is a TV series called Booster this has been in production hell too, Booster Gold. Uh, I don't know why anyone thinks this is going to be successful. It's going to be have to be low budget and a comedy. Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. 
Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, where Supergirl in this story was raised she is by a wolves. character who was <laughs> raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very... They just had that Swamp Thing series, which had an excellent pilot by James Wan. And then, I just don't know, where did this all fall apart? Uh, the series itself, they they ch they chunked that to death but uh, and and ruined it. But why, why keep making Swamp Thing a Dark thing? Dark horror story and the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. Swampy and thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I that's one thing I'm, I'm glad to hear the story because it doesn't seem like story writing is taking pre uh, precedent. Now, James Gunn, while we may disagree on certain casting and, and the way that they're handling certain characters and their vision for the future... For the time being, I'll be I'll be willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I am glad to hear that I want storytelling to be true to those is, is I want to be true to you guys important. and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me, and I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. Yeah, he's been real weird on Twitter, too, taking a lot of hate to a lot of people. What do you guys think? Are you interested? Uh, I did a short about this, and there was a lot of comments saying, like, you know, some some people are ready to give him the benefit of the doubt. Some people are just like, me. You know, I know my compadre Noob Noob is uh, very mad at James Gunn right now. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Check out the podcast. We also do live streams, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. We'd love to have you come join us. Come join the party. That's all we got here for today from Our Reviews Will Kill You. To all y'all at home, we love y'all, but I am on to the next one.